Welcome to FT Markets. Brazil has been causing investors an awful lot of concern recently. Hardly a day seems to go by without another piece of bad news. Last week, Standard & Poor's uh, downgraded its outlook. Uh, it's one notch above uh, sub-investment grade. It's been put on negative outlook, which means that at any time, probably in the next year, S&P will downgrade it. If any of the other two major ratings agencies follow suit, Brazil will have lost its very hard one investment grade rating and the outlook, already very bleak, will be getting worse. Uh, I'm discussing this today with John Paul Rathbone, a Latin American editor. JP, we've got a, um, a couple of charts to look at. The first one shows what's happened to the stock market. Uh, since uh, Dilma Rousseff was re-elected at the end of October last year, S&P, when it changed its outlook to negative, the first point it made was that the political situation was looking bleak. Uh, we can see from this chart that investors uh, during October last year were, were put off by uh, the threat of Dilma's re-election. Uh, they went on being quite gloomy. Then they cheered up at the beginning of this year with the appointment of Joaquin Levy, the orthodox Chicago economist, to run the finance ministry. But more recently, his measures have been diluted in Congress. This is what particularly worried S&P, but he is seen by many investors and analysts as being the right man for the job, but he's not being able to do it uh, because Congress dilutes his cost-cutting measures, his revenue-raising measures, puts in its own adjustments, and we see more of the same kind of pork barrel politics for which Brazil is famous. Um, how do you think politics might play out in Brazil over the coming months, uh, and what should investors be looking for? Well, I think the two biggest factors to watch out for Brazil are one on the external, so it's China and the commodity price boom and the ebbing of that, over which Brazil has no control whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is the internal political situation. I mean, the economy is going through a ringer. I think it's a bruising recession, not a crisis, but the element that is a crisis is the politics. And what will happen there, we don't really know, in fact, because of two factors. One is that the uh, judicial investigation is independent and will take its own course. That's the investigation into the Petrobras, into corruption, the Petrobras scandal. corruption scandal, which is part of the reason for the disquiet here that you see in the charts. Yeah. And the second reason is we don't know how politicians, uh, several of whom will be formally indicted in the weeks to come, how they'll react to that. We've had one reaction, which was the head of the lower Congress, and when he was indicted, uh, Cunha, he immediately said, I'm no longer with the government, yeah. I'm moving to the opposition, and uh, that was just another signal of the troubles that could be taken. Exactly, and, that, and he is one of the people who can most upset their, their legislative agenda. One of the things that I think probably worries a lot of investors is that there just doesn't seem to be any change in Brazilian politics. The kind of people who are hanging on by the skin of their teeth through this investigation are the kind of people who've been around. Cunha himself, I don't know if you remember during the, the Collor years, when Collor's bag man, uh, P.C. Farias, was, was killed in mysterious circumstances, Cunha was P.C. Farias's bag man. I mean, he's been around on the dark side of Brazilian politics for an awfully long time. And these people seem to have a lot of staying power. But I think sometimes investors should look on the bright side of Brazilian politics, which is that there are people like Joaquim Levy, there are people like the economics team that put together the Real Plan 20 years ago, so it's not that politics is a write-off altogether. There's the good side and there's the dark side. But as you say, we just don't quite know which side is going to come up trumps. Um, let's have a look at our next chart, which shows a much longer-term view of what's been happening in Brazil. This is uh, the Real, not since it was created under, under the Real plan, but since it was allowed to freely float at the end of 99. And there was the, the sharp devaluation you can see there, vertical drop. And we can see here again the influence of politics, uh, at least partially on Brazil. We see the very steep drop in the value of the real up until 2002 when investors were very worried about the election of Lula uh, as president. He then turned out to be all right. Uh, he then rode the wave of the commodities boom. Uh, and then after the crisis, he rode the wave of QE-induced credit, which was so helpful to the growth of Brazil's middle classes. Um, but I wonder what we're really seeing here. Is this investors learning to love uh, a, a government they thought they would hate? Or is this Brazil riding factors that are outside its control? And again, you say we've got China and domestic politics playing off against each other. How is that going to, well, how is it going to play out next? What are the forces that are within Brazil's control that it can do something about and the ones that it, that it can't change? 
Well, I'm not sure it's China and domestic politics playing off against each other. At the moment, they're going in the same direction. You've got poor domestic politics and you've got poor uh, performance or poorer performance from the Chinese economy. Uh, at this chart here, actually on a real uh, exchange rate adjusted basis, which strips out inflation, the Brazilian real is more or less at uh, slightly cheap to its 20-year 20 20 fair value, which you can't actually see on this nominal chart. So that suggests the real is marginally cheap, uh, would, which normally would suggest a buying opportunity, but this is not a normal situation. Um, the one, one thing I think that is worth reinforcing is the, uh, the, the Lava Giotto Petrobras corruption probe shows the strength uh, to some degree of Brazilian institutions. And this is incredibly encouraging. And if it leads to a realignment of Brazilian politics, which people have been saying is required ever since, basically since the years of democracy, then that can only be a good thing. But progress is not, or very rarely, linear. Yeah, that's one very big if and another very big but. JP, thanks very much. Thank you.